it would be like if you wrote a biblical fan fiction and you knew the Jesus story and you were like, and there was this whole other town, <laughs> this whole other town of lesbians where everyone just prays to God and gets pregnant in the same way Mary did. Hold on. This is where it gets insane and misogynistic. Okay. So there is a famous scene in this. I carried them. I created them. Which implies that men create the child and women carry the child. This is even more misogynistic than real human <laughs> earth biology. So she's actually... Actually, uh, I inseminated you. Therefore, I created the child. Therefore, I am the dominant partner in this relationship and make all child-rearing decisions. Would you like to know more? I am so excited for this episode. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's go for it. Yeah. This is going to be the worst. Yes, yeah. she is the worst. She is the worst person in the world. Huge skank. Terrible. What did I tell you, huh? The worst. She's the worst in the world. I got to put the worst <laughs> in here because, oh my God, does this deserve it? Two things that is going to make this somewhat unique when contrasted with other discussions of the Acolyte. One is we have some interesting insider industry information, given that our own documentary was recently canceled, about how decisions are being made inside of Hollywood right now, which can help you understand how something as insane as this could have gotten greenlit. Because that is something that before we worked in Hollywood, genuinely perplexed. Why is this getting greenlit? It's obviously not good for the industry. But then the second is how absolutely misogynistic the ideas presented in the Acolyte are. But wasn't it like produced by women? Yes, it was. They were trying to create something that was misandrous. A world... Well, and I want to get your reaction to the world. Start with one of the most controversial things. So let's get your real-time reaction to this. Because no okay. one doesn't know what happened. Yeah, tell me about the Acolyte. I didn't know it was out. I did not know there was more Star Wars property to enjoy. So I have not watched anything. I have not seen a single so preview. It's in place during the High Republic. Um, when, what is the High Republic? Uh, a long time before most of the stuff that you've seen. So um, pre-Queen Amidala or before? Like, is that Very before that. Long before. Before... Yeah, this is in a time when there were lots of cis and lots of Jedis before the rule of two. Living that in harmony? Rule, there wasn't a all split. All the time, but the, 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 the different era of Star Wars. Okay. But anyway, the point being, this isn't important to the show right now. Okay. So the point being, End of the High Republic, it follows two twins, an evil twin and a good twin. Oh, but oh like, my goodness, there's an evil twin. It reminds me of that scene, and I've got to post it from Sky High. What if I said it's not just her twin? It's her evil twin. This Friday, you say? Medulla, you dog. Sky High <laughs> is so undersold as a show. It really because is. Do you want to go? Because it's, a, it's about a world of uh, superheroes. And uh, it plays with a lot of tropes from that. And one guy asked the other guy, do you want to go on a date with twins? <gasps> what if I told you she was the evil twin? <laughs> That's such a uh, great scene. So uh, anyway, I, I can I, already tell that this movie is very unique and bold in its right, writing. No, no, no. Hold on. I okay. haven't gotten to the insane part yet. So okay. episode yeah. three is the one where everyone goes crazy. So episode three takes place in a backstory where these two girls were raised. Okay. They were raised in a lesbian <laughs> cult or religion. Oh, like, okay. Everyone's a woman. It's run by a, a strong black woman. So don't worry about that. Good. This is very South Park predicted this. Put a ticket it. Make her gay. Uh, yes, Miss Kennedy. Uh, some of the execs are just expressing that maybe... Well, well, that maybe we should go a different route than we did with Indiana Jones. Fuck Indiana Jones. Put a ticket in. Make her name it gay. Any diverse woman in it. Make his name. But, Mrs. Kennedy, ba Bambi's a baby deer. Fuck, baby, dear, put a chicken in, make her gay. The linguine and clam sauce. Uh, excuse me, I believe I asked you to put a chicken in this and make her gay. Uh, yes, the chef was a little confused what you meant by that. It means put a chicken in the linguine and make her fucking gay. And I want it lame. 
And I think that's why she was so mad is probably this was already so well into production at that point that she couldn't stop it, but they put a chick in her and make her gay and lame. Oh no. Being a meme when this thing had been greenlit and funded and she couldn't get out of it. Oh. Lesbian cult, but. Were they trying to play it off like Amazon's Amazon Warrior? Much more Wiccan ish than that. It was very oh. clear. There's this one scene where they're all chanting and very oh. Wiccan y. And okay. oh, they call it a force, but we call it a thread. If There's Amazons those... were really mystical. Yeah. Okay. So I got to get your reaction to this. So, how do you suppose this tribe of all lesbians procreated in the Star Wars universe? I'm, by, by the way, I met Simone in her pictures on her dating profile. She wore film grade stormtrooper armor for 5017 Division, like very into Star Wars back in the day. We still have Star Wars art on our walls from back when she was younger. This is something that she identified with, but hasn't really watched any of the recent stuff because why haven't you watched the recent stuff? <laughs> it started sucking. <laughs> I don't like okay. it anymore. So how do you um, suppose this lesbian cult was reproducing? So they would cut off one of their breasts like amazons and then the breast would form into a new child no okay so they, really, they would form a wiccan really circle true. they would form a wiccan circle no, no, and think, think what you know about star wars lore what could be the most sacrilegious way they were reproducing to the lore of the star wars universe they they killed baby yodas to create genetic material uh, they, they, they were using the force to impregnate other women the way anakin was born and only anakin was born and that made anakin unique and special in the star wars universe oh yeah it was jesus yeah that's how they make all of their kids in this community oh Okay. It, it is very Jesus, but this is, and I actually like it with biblical fan fiction. It would be like if you wrote a biblical fan fiction and you knew the Jesus story and you were like, and there was this whole other town, <laughs> this whole other town of lesbians where everyone just prays to God and gets pregnant in the same way Mary did because they're all sinless. That's basically what they did with this. Story. Isn't that kind of a lesbian dream? If you could just have kids without male involvement. Hold on. This is where it gets insane and misogynistic. Okay. So there is a famous scene in this. I carried them. I created them. Where the one lesbian is saying to the other lesbian to try to say that I should be the one who decides how they're raised. Okay. She goes, I carried them. And then the other lesbian, the strong black woman, she replies... I created them, which implies that men create the child and women carry the child. This is even more misogynistic than real human earth biology. So she's actually, actually, I inseminated you. Therefore, I created the child. Therefore, I am the dominant partner in this relationship and make all child rearing decisions. It's worse that the analog for the male here is the force. I just, wow. Okay, this is, did, uh, they need yeah. to, they need to have sensitivity readers, but the, the, they're just normies because I no, don't. They're so woke. They didn't even think to have sensitivity readers. No, 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 sensitivity readers are the most woke. So that's the problem. I, I think the problem think is that they're... like a normal person yeah. reading this would be like, this is very misogynistic. Yeah. Like you wow. think that men create the child and women just carry it. And therefore men should have dominance over all family decisions. There was a period in human history where that seemed to be what people believed. Yes. Well, and this is actually interesting. It shows that like when you're in these ultra woke circles, cause you cannot criticize strong black female writer or whatever, whoever wrote this, like that no one, they're just so unaware of how genuinely toxic their views have become mm -hmm. in terms of misogynistic aspects of their views because nobody's willing to challenge them. Oh boy. Yeah. What I'm that really happens. In the I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the shot in this show. I created them, therefore I win. Okay, here is the so we gotta keep going with what happens to this temple. There's more before we get to our insider story here. Yes. Okay. There is more. Okay. okay. So okay. 
they try to brainwash the girls. Now, in the show, it's they're the good guys and the Jedis are the bad guys, which is fucking stupid. So wait, so um, the, we're, let, again, we're back to the lesbian uh, Jedi commune and, and they're raising the female Amazon younglings. Okay, right. So yeah, 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 and they are talking about their upbringing. As the Jedis think, and this is framed multiple times, that we are using the dark side. Now, keep in mind, we know from the series. So if you are taking this from the outside perspective and you are watching this the way I think it should be watched as in-universe fascist propaganda, okay. um, they admit that the Jedi say that they're using the dark side of the Force. They're like, some would say the way we're using the Force is dark-sided. There is only one way to dark side use the Force, which is to use the Force to control and manipulate other people to force the force to act by your will wait um, but jedi do that all the time the whole like no, no, no. the jedi are supposed to you're, be enacting the force's will on reality uh -huh. and the force helps them do that the dark siders have their own will and they use that to exercise the force on yeah reality. but how is how are dark siders using their own will is that not just the force using them to use their will no that is not the way the dark side is seen in the universe no and this is also why the dark side isn't intrinsically negative. It's just, do you relate to reality via harmony? Which, of course, we would see it's a mystic pathway. So in many ways, from our perspective, the Jedis are the bad guys. Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. So they are fighting for a mystic pathway, whereas the dark siders are can be fighting for a monotheistic pathway. I've been Team um, Sith since you met me, Malcolm. But in this context it means something quite different because this is like a coven of witches and we are seeing that the girls are trained from a young age to just not trust anyone outside the group, to not trust and to believe that they're a persecuted minority. And are they all... raised with a certain imperative? Is there a raison d'etre de... Yes, like that. we are a persecuted minority. Everyone else is a bad guy. Well, so is their job to eliminate all other people? So what do they, do they exist to defend themselves and just exist in they their exist own tiny to defend community? Themselves. Well, here's this fucking okay. insane, okay? okay? They exist to defend themselves, but, but, and it's all, and we need to use the force to procreate. These are the only two children in this giant commune of women. Okay. Oh, so there's not, okay. This isn't like a regular thing that they do. And I think that this shows the way progressives view children. They're like, if we have two children for 80 women that can save our culture. And <laughs> That'll <like>, do. <laughs> well, intergenerationally, that won't do. Especially what happens immediately after this, the children leave this culture. Isn't that more of an indication of the short-term thinking of progressive culture in general? That there's a complete lack of long-termism and it's really about what's happening now. There's a myopia. Yeah. So then next, what happens? Because we got to go over what happens in this episode because it's insane. So they live in this like old base on a mountain in an abandoned world. And it's this giant stone semicircle, like you would see in a lot of Star Wars stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool idea. Problem is they light it up like a freaking Christmas tree. So it would be <laughs> obvious to anyone when they're trying to hide their kids from this Jedi thing. Don't you understand? Um, Women need good lighting, Malcolm. Jesus. Even they're after so a lifetime of brainwashing, the evil one wants to stay. Uh, the good one wants to go as a Jedi, or at least this is the way I'm reading it. I, it might be the other way around, but yeah. And she they're wants twins. To I'm sure they're hard group. to tell apart. Do they dress um, them the same? No, this group tells her to lie to the Jedi. That's how she's going to stay. She needs to lie to the Jedi in order to stay in the group. And she doesn't want to. And she doesn't lie to the Jedi, by the way. The, the so they're trying to take their two young and use them to infiltrate an existing Jedi order, correct? No, they just don't want the Jedi to take their kids at all. Oh, okay. And so they tell the kids to lie to the Jedi. Okay. Um, except the kid wants to escape them. The kid clearly seems to understand that they're abusive and wants <laughs> to get away, okay. which is interesting that they don't see the coding in this, but it's very clear. The kid, you can read this separately. The kid wants to join the Mormon missionaries who have come to their house. And the parents oh, there are space them. Mormons in this too. All right. So we got some Starship Mormon Troopers missionary. going on here. Yeah. Yeah. So. They, she's been coached to lie to them. Okay. God, coaching children to lie to space CPS, basically. That is fantastic. <laughs> but she doesn't because she has a, a moral conscience. And then the other one, the evil one, is I won't let you leave. And she's like, what, what do you mean by that? And she's like, I'm going to kill you. Like, <laughs> immediately to 11, right? That escalates. It's also, like, it's very clear that this giant group of women, who is only raising two kids, by the way, is not at all qualified to be parents if one of their kids is already 
trying to murder the other one and torturing animals. That's how, by the way, it's established that she is the bad, the the evil twin, is that she tortures animals. The moms are like, no, this is fine. The, the, the space CPS does need to come and take these kids. And she lights this girl's diary on fire and then locks her in the room and throws it on the ground. And what happens next? The giant stone fortress burns down. She burns the oopsies. She burns down. Now, keep in mind that in the episode before this, this is like why you need mansplaining. Many people are like, in the episode before this, there was a fire in space, a campfire in space, mm -hmm. outer space with no air. And in this episode, a giant concrete slash stone fortress caught into a rapid fire. Oh, I was going to ask. I figured it just, it'd be more like the Globe Theater or something. Fully wood. It's completely concrete and stone. You don't see I don't eat, yeah, space rocks are flammable, Malcolm. Stop. Yeah, we, don't, we don't know. Maybe, maybe telling women made of, how space rocks are made. Is okay. Made of potassium infused rocks. Yeah, duh. Bustable. Yeah. So, one, this is why you need a sarcastic conservative man on every set. Uh, if you would like to hire us for anti DEI consulting, we are starting a firm to do that. Just let us know. Just sarcastic um, conservative man. Why, yeah, of course they should. I know. No, I, there actually should be. And we can clear up all of these problems you might have on the cheap. We'll just fire people. We'll only take a percent of the money we save you. So That's actually a good business model. No, um, it is. And the company would be run technically because you are a trans ace woman by their perspective. You're and trans, disabled. You're I'm autistic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you're autistic, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. who better to be making these decisions? Um, <laughs> so anyway... Yeah. And I have an you know, MBA from Stanford. I'm qualified to do this. I've run big companies. I've been a uh, director of strategy at a major VC firm. So anyway, we are at this point. The whole thing's burning down. So all of the lesbians, mm -hmm. as they're leaving, because of course the Jedi saved the good one. They run. Oh, by the what lesbians. happens to the evil twin whose diary was burned? She teleports outside somehow. Plot oh. armor. It's insane. It's genuinely insane. But anyway, okay. the but she the good one thinks she's dead. Oh. And I'm assuming it's a good one that goes with the Jedi. If it's not, I haven't watched the episode because I will not torture myself with this or pay for Disney+. Plus. <laughs> but I've watched a lot of reviews and they haven't clarified this point yet. Okay, gotcha. It doesn't matter. Does it matter? No. Doesn't no. matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. She, what was I going to say? She runs by this room and all of these lesbian witches are dead. Do so they the all murder happy. suicide or what? We don't know. It's it doesn't look like they burned. The room isn't on fire. Maybe, well, maybe they, they didn't know it. about crawling on the ground. The, the bad fire training. That's yeah, what killed bad fire. Them. That's it's deadly. Maybe Disney just wanted to use this as a teaching moment to remind everyone to to crawl on the ground for a fire. Yeah, well, and the, it's interesting that this cult is supposed to be like way more powerful than the Jedi. They make that clear that lesbian well, space yeah. is. I love this comment here, by the way. Okay. The witches are so powerful, they can easily kill a Jedi using the thing they said wasn't a weapon. I should note here that they said that the Force isn't a weapon. Okay, okay. they say no one can use the Force as a weapon, or at least you're not supposed to use the Force as a weapon. Yeah. So the witches are so powerful that they can easily kill the Jedi using the thing that they swear is not a weapon, and no one should use as a weapon. Then they all died at once by a fire caused by a single girl in a giant fortress made of stone with people inside the fortress who can project barriers and control gravity. F flammable stone and not necessarily exactly. smoke barriers. Of potassium. It, it's po plausible. Plausible. So now we get to talk about our own little private story with Hollywood. Unless you have some final comments on this. And do you think that like Star Wars lore is recoverable at this point or anyone's going to give it a chance again? Uh, when did you stop watching? I stopped watching after the pod race. That's really, and by stopped watching, I still went through the motions of trying to watch some of the properties, but I have no memory after that oh, point. So even it, before it went woke, you stopped in the mm -hmm, prequel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last good moment for me was the pod race. And after that, Everything was so traumatically bad as far as I'm concerned that I literally have no memory of it. But pod racing is cool. So that's okay. But you watched the first and the second of the new movies with me. We, we didn't watch a return of whatever. I do not. Watch that one of the Palpatine movie. You don't remember it. I you remember, remember being deeply unhappy. And in the one 
Mm -mm. Yeah. I've literally blocked them out. And I wasn't even drunk. Remember, I used to try to get blackout drunk to watch things with you because it was really fun. And then I'd forget them and then I could watch them again. But now, no. Yeah, sorry. It just, I don't know. They just got bad. I, I liked the camp. And the camp went away when it became corporate. So that's where I lost it. Woke wasn't even what killed it for me. It was the, the loss of camp. Wait, Jar Binks wasn't camp enough for you? Yeah, yeah I guess he's pretty camp, but it, that it felt more cringe than camp. And of course, now he's gone through. He's gone through the gauntlet, and now he is Sith Lord Jar Binks. So that's cool. Um, no, they, they, that's not canon. That's fan. It, it doesn't matter because it's just obviously true. Come on, Malcolm. There's no way it's not. But people who are familiar with the Sith Lord Jar Binks theory, it's that Jar Binks was actually very powerful with the Force and was a Sith Lord who was tricking Jedi and creating these events. And it actually makes a lot of sense given all of his canon appearances. And there's an easy way you could craft a narrative around that. And I would love to see Disney do that. But they won't do anything that interesting. Yeah. No, everything about Jar Binks points to that. It is irrefutable truth. Whether or not the creators of Dirt Banks realize that is not my problem. He's a racist stereotype. But that makes it even better. It's he's also this like anti-woke, like I'm going to even mock like every concept of you thinking you're like it just everything about it. It this this incredibly like racist, evil character. It's like a, a white minstrel performer that is also incredibly evil and trying to ruin all the forces of good. What better character could there be? But yeah, I love that Star Wars, the old Star Wars went hard into racial stereotypes. Oh my God. Remember the Jewish character? The floating <laughs> guy was the long nose who, yeah, was was, who, who owned slaves and was, was like bad. trick people yeah. with, with games. And he wore like the old timey, like medieval Jewish hat style. Yeah. And I can do boss. Yep. And, and he spoke in that accent. Oh my God. That was horrifying. I was like, whoa. It was extremely racist movie and i know always said that the original anakin slash darth vader stereotype was a, a, obviously a calvinist stereotype from older media it was all of the pain obsessed minimalism obsessed single-minded focused moralizing i know what's right everyone else is wrong and the super manic it's like a young person and then the older iteration that's okay i'm just gonna carry out my mission no matter what yeah it's interesting the whole thing was built around stereotypes and i think that made it better to be honest i think that stereotypes fit snugly within our mind what are you saying i guess there are still very offensive stereotypes right so there was the offensive jew stereotype the offensive what was it supposed to be jamaican stereotype jamaican. and now we have the offensive lesbian stereotype and it's fine lesbians who no because it's not like lesbian it wasn't interesting lesbian this is another thing where they're like <laughs> they tried to make this movie palatable to women by mm. putting a bunch of lesbians in it that is not what women watch i don't and know they... no there, there are some a very small handful but there are some good lesbian shows according to lesbians right, right, right. but the, the, this is not what the mainstream woman wants the mainstream woman wants Bridgerton, okay? Then, yes, she does. And you could do this with Star Wars. You could have a bunch of nobles with hot, masculine, buff men interacting with women and saving them. And I was know, actually going to say, though, here's the thing, and this is actually even more accurate, although Bridgerton is, is very accurate. The, the mainstream woman wants Yaoi. And oh, yeah, then you have a, yeah, oh, yeah, you have a man on man action devoid of women. I'm sorry, but like putting a bunch of chicks in it and making them gay is not the answer unless you're actually like really good you have to be really good and these are like this. old women by the way this isn't like hot lesbian stuff we need oh, to so see that's yeah that. okay like at least make them hot at least make them fun for the whole family but yeah that's yeah i guess go no, ahead and but okay so people might not understand how this happened and now i need to tell a personal anecdote that happened to us <laughs> recently and this so is speculative whatever. speculative and i'm not going to give names or companies so you guys can ignore that but we have been trying to make a documentary or a lot of firms have been trying to make a documentary about our family for a while now. And the and pronatal pronatalism in general. Yeah. And it's generally the same story over and over again, which is it gets approved by the creative department and it gets shut down by the legal department. And we've had this at major streaming networks multiple times at this point. The most recent excuse for the shutdown was that we practice corporal punishment and that caused problems for illegal. Now, this is very confusing to me because... It's legal in our state, so it shouldn't have anything to do with legal, except that maybe it affects ads, but that's not legal's department. 
But in addition to that, it's something the majority of Americans do, and it's something that the most recent research backs. You can look at the giant meta study done last year, parental punishment, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, 2023. Those two things being the case, why would it be shut down by legal? Right? And this is where I realized something. There hasn't been a single right-leaning show that has been greenlit by a major streaming network in about the past 10 years where, where characters are shown in a somewhat right-leaning light as positive. And people can say, what about Tiger King? Well, which you might not be familiar with is Tiger King was actually pre-produced and then bought by a studio, which seems to be okay for conservative shows. You just cannot have the studio produce it itself, which shows me that the legal departments of these studios, after they have been ransacked by DEI departments, are the core problem. It is not the DEI departments themselves. And unless you can influence legal departments of the major studios, you are never going to get anything passed through, but also these departments and the managers who do not get fired when they make bad numbers. They get to fire the creatives, right? but they have incentivized the creatives to make these sorts of things by canceling everything that comes through the pipeline that isn't far left. These are the same companies that let forward videos that have literal like PDA file content in them that have, it is insane the stuff that they are greenlighting, right? Dear white people, for example, right? Yet slightly conservatively coded content ends up getting killed. And the reason is, is because the institutional bureaucracies of these structures are structured in a way where the urban monoculture has such control of them that deviating from it, even in ways that the majority of the American populace, the vast majority of their audience deviates from it in, is unacceptable. Now, of course, caveat, there are exceptions to this. There are some streaming platforms or networks that do have shows that, that showcase conservative people. No. Have you Welcome looked at the last big conservative show that did? You're looking at like Duck Dynasty, and that was well over 10 years ago. Welcome You're... to Plathville. Welcome to Plaqueville? Plathville. I've never heard of this. Where is it streaming? TLC. That is not a major network that we've talked about. No, yeah, no, we haven't so looked at TLC. I'm just saying that there are, there are exceptions. But no, I, I think that kind of proves our point. If that's what you came up with as your example, when historically speaking, there were lots of conservative-leaning shows like Duck Dynasty, the, the fact that this exists, or, or do you guys remember The Man Show? Like, this was a thing that existed for a while. Do you um, remember Spike TV in general, which was like, yeah, Spike TV and the entire network guys. for men. Yeah. yeah Except some, everyone uh, watched it because it was fun. Yeah. They had a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. I liked it. I remember that this one a skit where the little kid, this the Spike TV boy, would go into this Quickie Mart type things and been like, they'd be, he, he'd get alcohol and they'd say, Can you show me your ID? And he'd go, Can you show me your green card? <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Back when jokes were jokes. Back when jokes were jokes. You can never do that today. I'll tell it's you not, what. It's not funny anymore because people have made immigration lame and not fun. Scary. I don't can like you it. show me your ID? Can you show me your green card? <laughs> I just can't. But yeah, no. So the problem is that systemically, even lightly conservatively leaning things cannot be shown at these platforms, even when what makes them conservative is opinions that are held by the majority of Americans. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a pretty big market for it. There are only a small number of channels that appear to be actively right. catering to that market, which is interesting. Even oh, though, way, honestly, we're... content about conservatives is equally entertaining to both conservative and progressive markets because it's one of those things where you're either like, oh, these people are great, or you're like, oh, these monsters are hilarious. And so either way, you win. But I think this is this makes me think, of course, of Tracy Woodgrain's Substack essay on how Republicans are screwed, how when you look at a lot of the executional apparatus that is being minted by universities, and this is lawyers, this is legislators, this is the people who functionally get things done within large bureaucracies, because these institutions are so progressively coded and kind of designed at this point to mint progressives, even if centrists and conservatives enter them. 
only progressives can come out to a certain extent, unless you've been totally radicalized against it. And there may be more of that backfiring. Benjamin Boyce seemed to be radicalized in the other direction by his brush with the progressive institution. But yeah, that just means that you're not going to have a lot of conservative lawyers and producers and people who can grow within these really large networks. So of course you're going to have conservative independent filmmakers and conservative entrepreneurs and conservative anything that's small scale. But when you get to the big bureaucracies, it's going well, I mean, to be- AI is going to change this game, I think. And, and I also, sure. when we can do AI automation of shows or animation, it's going to completely up in this model. But with and- Sora and other Sora-like competitors, you can already make really amazing film content. It's only a matter of time until- Yeah, so the final point I'd end on is we have been told- that if, and, and this is just a thing, if somebody wants to invest in this, they can. I don't really care one way or the other way. But if we created something like a Tiger King for our family, right, like of our family, it would probably do well in the film festival circuit, and then we could get it onto one of the streaming platforms, and you'd likely make a good return. But it's going to require a pretty hefty investment, like half a million dollars or something like that. So if anyone is interested in doing that, let us know. But only if you're like, one, you have the money to do something like that. I don't want to fan raise money for something like this. If somebody's doing it, I want it to be an investment that they plan to make a good return on. And then we'll do our part to ensure that you make that return. But outside of that, yeah, tough situation. But that might help to explain why the lesbians didn't know basic fire safety. Not fire safety. Living in a fucking concrete building is fire safety. Not when the concrete is obviously flammable and they probably knew that. I don't, where did the good slash evil twin get an incendiary device? She just left fire on the ground. She was a little lighter. So they had fire there. Yeah. But in the building full of flammable stones. It apparently. hadn't burned down yet for some reason. Oh, it's in, uh, you've left so many loose ends with this fascinating show. I feel like now I have to watch it, but I'm too busy watching Bridgerton and their ridiculous costumes. Because here's what Bridgerton actually is. Bridgerton is not a historical romance. It is the season in the capital of the Hunger Games, which is what I always wanted. It, it is literally the dating and season. You could have that in Star Wars. You could have a Coruscant movie. You could have yeah. a... Oh, my God, oh so I do Coruscant. Yeah, for sure. But honestly, Bridgerton just did that. Bridgerton sci-fi, practically. It's not actually like period dress or anything. It, and it's it's great. So personally, I think I've got what I need media-wise. So I'm glad I'm watching that. And I have seen that there were a lot of sexy men in Bridgerton. Are you watching too many sexy men being sexy? No one watches this for the men or women in it. They watch it for the costumes. 100% it is the costumes. They're really okay. pretty. Yeah. I love them. I love them. I love you. <laughs> I love do. Right. You too. Still a lot of poop. This was the big one. I'm still, I'm on my way. I'm nearly done. Okay. We're getting cleaner. This is getting, the, the situation is improving. I'm almost done. There's still a lot of wiping happening. It's okay. We have plenty of time for the episode. Hang in there. We can do this. Hold on. Hang in there. Okay, almost done. Almost done. And I'm getting the diaper now. Fresh diapers coming in. And I'm doing this with one hand, so it's a little awkward. Hold on. Okay. Getting the diaper installed. It's happening. Oh boy, I've discovered more poop and I'm wiping it off. All right. And the diaper's coming on. Other diapers going into the trash. I'm nearly done now. I'm on my way over. I'm definitely on my way over. The diaper is being fixed. One tab is on. Now the second tab is on. I'm almost there. She's looking very serious about this, Indy. I'm putting out the fluffs. If you don't put out the fluffs, the next diaper is blowout, almost guaranteed. And now I'm tucking in legs. Checking to make sure that there is no fecal matter on my hands. And I'm making my way over. Okay, okay, I'm almost there. Almost there. On my way right now. 
And I'm walking over. I'm walking over. I'm walking over. I'm sitting down. I'm I'm here now. I have the baby. I cannot hear you yet. I am putting her down. The poop has been removed. And I will soon be able to hear you. And I'm super excited for this. The yes. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't want you to give up on this just because we had another diaper. Oh, no.